Hi everyone, my name is Fan Fei from the University of Hong Kong. And today I'm glad to give you the presentation of my recent work, which is to use the phase field method to model the mixed mode fracture in rock specimen with discontinuities from laboratory skew to the field skew. As you may know, the failure of the rock masses are usually caused by the fracture propagation and the fracture coalescence. And in order to investigate the mechanism behind this propagation and the coalescence, researchers have conducted some laboratory tests. And from both in situ rock masses and laboratory testing results, researchers have observed that the rock cracks usually involve the combination of the tensile crack and the shear crack, which is called the mixed mode crack in the literature. And uh, to connect the mixed mode crack observed in both field skew and uh, laboratory skew, we may rely on some computational models to get more understanding. And in the past decades, there are several computational models that has been developed to model the mixed mode crack in the rock uh, specimen. These computational models can be divided into two categories based on their methodology and the method from the first category are based on the continuum mechanics principle. For example, like the finite element method, displacement discontinuity method. However, this continuum based method has a drawback that they usually involve the complex algorithm to track crack propagation. Another category to model the rock cracking is based on the grain and the particles. Representative examples like the discrete element model. For the discrete element models, the size of the elements should be comparable to the grain size in the real material. Therefore, for the discrete element method, it usually requires huge computational cost especially for large scale problems. So it may not be suitable for discrete element method to simulate a few scale problem. In the recent years, the phase field method has emerged as an innovative method to simulate the fracture nucleation and the fracture propagation. Here, I will give a brief introduction of this method. So traditionally in a two dimensional uh, solid continuums, we will consider this crack as a discrete form. And the spatial distribution of this discrete crack can be represented by the delta function as shown on your right. However, in the phase field method, it approximates this discrete crack in a diffusive region by introducing a phase field variable called d. And this d is ranging from 0 to 1, with d equal to 0 indicating the undamaged material and d equal to 1 indicating the fully damaged materials. And as you can see on the right, the delta function of the discrete crack form has also been changed into a smeared region with finite weights. And this width of the smeared regions uh, is determined by the phase field length parameter, which is denoted by L here. And because the phase field method approximate this discrete crack in a diffusive region, it has some important advantages. First, the phase field method does not need any complex algorithm to track the crack propagation, but can easily capture this crack propagation by solving the field variable D. Second, because the phase field method is based on the continuum mechanics, it is theoretically capable to simulate large scale problems. And due to these advantages, uh, researchers have applied this phase field method to simulate rock cracking. The famous examples include the phase field modeling of the hydraulic fracturing. But uh, in these studies, the researchers only consider the tensile crack in the rock masses, while, as I mentioned, the rock masses are usually mixed mode. Therefore, to extend uh, to model the mixed mode rock cracking, some researchers have extended this uh, phase field formulations to simulate the mixed mode rock fracture. But this phase field formulation still has an intrinsic problem that the phase field length parameter is actually related to the material strength. Therefore, when choosing the values of this uh, phase field length parameter, it should be constrained by the material strength, which make it difficult for the phase field modeling of the cracks across skills. 
To address this issue, some researchers have developed lens insensitive phase field model for both cohesive tensile cracks and frictional shear cracks. And thanks to these lens insensitive models, uh, it allows us to model the cracks in different scales. But these studies are still limited to either tensile or shear fracture. Recently, a new phase view model, which is called the double phase view model, has been developed to simulate a mixed mode crack in and by our group. And in this double phase view model, as you can see, both mode one and mode two cracks can be approximated by introducing the two phase field variables. More specifically, the first, back, uh, the first phase field variable D1 represents the mode one tensile cracks and the second phase field variable D2 represents the mode two shear cracks. And basically this double phase field model combines the two lens insensitive phase field models for both cohesive tensile cracks and frictional shear cracks. And on the right, you can see their formulation. And there are some important terms in these formulations that I want to introduce. First, this GD indicating the degradation function, which is a special function in the phase field method. And H here represents the crack driving forces for each crack mode and G indicates the fracture energy for each crack mode. The remaining problem is how can we rigorously combine these two lens insensitive phase field models to simulate the mixed mode crack. To solve these problems, uh, we adopted three approaches. The first approach is to decompose the string energy according to the crack orientation. And based on this decomposed string energy, we calculate the crack driving force for each crack mode according to the contact condition of a given material point. And finally, we determine the dominant fracturing mode at a given material point through an energy-based criterion. And if you are interested at our formulations, uh, you can check out our recent paper, which is published in CMAME. And because of uh, we combine the two lens insensitive phase field models. The double phase field models has the very important feature that it allows us to use the phase field model to simulate the rough fracture in different scales. Also, all the modeling parameters required by this double phase field model can be directly measured from the laboratory tests. And after introducing the double phase field model here, we like to use the double phase field model to simulate the rock cracking in different scales. And let's begin with the problem at the laboratory scale. Here for this problem, we choose two different setups. More specifically, the first setup is the specimen with a single floor. And the second setup is a specimen with two coplanar floors. And both problem setups are based on experimental tests uh, by Wang and Einstein published in 2009. And for both single floor specimen and double floor specimen, we choose two values of the inclination angle for this pre-existing floors. And on the right, I have also listed the required material parameters for the double phase field models. As you can see, all of these modeling parameters can be directly measured from laboratory tests. And for the specific values for this um, modeling parameters used to simulate these problems, they are calibrated to match the experimental result by Wang and Einstein on Gibson specimen. We, we first take a look at this uh, single floor specimen with inclination angle of 45 degrees. As you can see, the wing, tensile wing crack first initiate at the crack tips and then the shear cracks will grow at the crack tips and followed by the secondary tensile cracks. As you can see, the resulting cracking patterns from our, from our simulations is quite similar to the one obtained in the experiment. And also we compare the stress string curves and find that actually the simulated stress string curve match the experimental result very well. Then we move to the case with the inclination angle of 60 degree. The cracking process is actually quite similar to the previous case with 45 degrees. 
as you can see, the tensor wind crack developed first and then the shear cracks and eventually the secondary tensor cracks grows. And the cracking patterns is also quite consistent with the experimental result. And as you can see, the stress strain curves are also well matched. Then we move to the double floor specimen and we first we begin with the inclination angle of 45 degrees. For this case, as you can see, the tensile wind crack still initiate first at four floor tips. And then the shear crack will grow and the crack is finally coalesced by the secondary tensile crack developed at the center of the specimen. And the resulting crack patterns is still consistent with the experimental results. Also, we compare the stress strain curves and find that the both coalescent stress and the peak stress for the specimen are well matched with the experimental results. And finally, we take a look of this double floor specimen with the inclination angle of 60 degrees. As you can see, the cracking process for this case is similar to the previous case with the 45 degrees inclination angles and the crack is coalesced by a combination of the shear cracks and the tensile cracks, which is consistent with the experimental result. And also for the stress strain curves, we can find the peak stress are well matched, although there's some difference in the coalesced stress. So for this simulation at the laboratory view, we validate the double phase field models, both qualitatively and quantitatively in terms of their cracking patterns and the stress strain curves. Then we move to the second numerical example, which is to use the double phase field model to simulate the rock cracking at the field scale. And here we designed a setup for the real rock slope, which contains the series of pre-existing joints, as you can see on the left. And I also listed all necessary material parameters on the right and their specific values. And I like to highlight that these material parameters for the double phase field model can be measured from the laboratory test, even for this field scale modeling problem. And then here I present the simulation result for this field scale problem. And as you can see, the tensile cracks will develop first from the pre existing joints and it coalesced with the upper pre-existing joints gradually, and it finally formed a slip surface and lead to the failure of this rock slope. And this simulation results shows that the failure of the rock slope is caused by the progressive slip surface formation, which demonstrates that the double phase field model is capable to simulate these field scale problems. And also we compared our simulation result with the experimental result and the find that actually their coalescence patterns are quite similar. So it also means that double phase field model can help us understand more between the, uh, in the connection between the field scale cracking pattern and the experimental scale cracking pattern. And here I will summarize my presentation for this study. So in this study, I used the double phase field model to simulate the rough fracture in different skills. And at the laboratory skills, we observed that the simulated cracking patterns match the experimental result well, and also for the stress strain curves. So this result does validate our, uh, the double phase field model. And we also use the double phase field model to simulate the field skill problems and in the simulation result, we observed the coalesce of the pre-existing joints, uh, which finally give the progressive failure of the rock slope and also the coalescence patterns comparable to the experimental observations. And this simulation result thus can help us understand more about the rock fraction process across different skills. And more details can be found in our conference papers as you shown on your right. And at the end, I like to thanks for the financial support for this study. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.